In this video, I'm gonna show you what 1.5 million gets you in the Bay Area. We could have been approved for mortgage a lot earlier because we're permanent residents in the US since 2016. But when they look at your mortgage application, they look at your tax returns. And with tax returns, you have two strategies. One strategy, you try to optimize the business in a way that you don't pay a lot of taxes. And by this, you're investing in equipment, you're hiring more expensive people, you're investing in development of your IP, etc. And I was a fan of this first strategy, especially at the stage of our business growth. But then, you know, a couple years ago, I was like, I really want to buy something in the United States because I see my future here. So I had to change my tax strategy to start paying more taxes. Uh, so I didn't invest that much in the business. I was pulling out some money to actually save for a down payment. Now we were finally approved for mortgage. Our mortgage is for $1.5 million. The rate is 4.5%. But we got approved for the rate several weeks ago. Meanwhile, the Fed raised its rate, so probably when we find the right house, the rate is gonna be higher. The down payment is 20%. So we started looking for a house. I am still not sure, like we applied for an investment property. I'm also thinking maybe we should buy primary because we're renting right now, but I'm still like in the middle of deciding because I really like the place that we're renting right now. And I was thinking maybe we buy something that could be a good investment property so we could rent it out, but that could also be a good home for a family. So something that I would also consider moving into. And a lot of people would say, Marina, but just buy in some other state where you would actually be able to, you know, have a good cash flow, whatever. The thing is, I don't look at this as purely investment property. For me, real estate investing is about actually loving the place and loving the neighborhood. So I'm still looking at the houses, but I just want you to understand my perspective. I really want to like the place. Um, I know that in Silicon Valley prices double every 10 years, so that makes it okay for me. We're looking for something in the Bay Area just because we really like this place. We live here. We don't really travel a lot outside. Uh, and they also tell that your first investment property should be a maximum one hour drive away from where you live so you could easily go there, fix things, come back. And because you understand the area. So it looks like 1.5 would get us something decent here in Pacifica, which is actually great because you have the ocean here and it's very close to San Francisco. We have a lot of friends who live here. We could also look at some places in Santa Clara. Uh, we're gonna look at Mountain View. But in general, it doesn't really get us a lot, but we'll try and see what we can get here. So we're in the area to see the house. The house is right behind me. And on this street, there is this RV camp. The highway is right there. There's the highway. 1.5 or less, one result. Click. Da 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 Okay, if we're completely honest, if you drive two minutes away from the house, you actually see playgrounds and this really nice area, so it's not too bad. But the exact location of the home is like, I don't know. That it's all super like all renovated you can just go and rent it out right away if you want to rent it out or you can move in right out right away if you, if you want to move in that's nice this is this is for youtube studio right just sit here this is a killer view 
I think if you're buying in Pacifica, you have to have a view. Compared to like right, half an hour ago, I was at home and I was wearing my t-shirt. Okay, so there is one bathroom for the whole house. Math. Okay. Oh, not for the whole house, for the whole floor. One bathroom on the second floor. Okay, this is three bedroom, but I would say it's like a two bedroom. Because if it's like a lot of people sharing, then one bathroom won't be enough. Oh, there's a fireplace. Yeah, this is rare these days. Because I think they don't allow fireplaces in new constructions. So the agent said that this home in Pacifica is gonna go for 1.6 million. Honestly, I've been looking at how much houses go for in this region and I think it's gonna sell for 1.4, but we'll see. You know, it's just crazy how you can't really predict uh, how much the house is gonna sell for, but my friends who bought a house in Pacifica, I think it was like six months ago, uh, it was listed for 1.5 and they bought it for 1.59. So a little less than 100,000 over asking price. Anyways, let's pretend that this house goes for whatever they have here on Zillow. Let's just look at the mortgage calculator to see uh, what we'll have to pay. So we copy this, 1 million. We go to the mortgage calculator, loan amount, 1 million. This is our loan amount and then 30 year, and I want to include taxes and fees. So my credit score is a little over, I think it's somewhere here. So this is the interest that we're getting, and actually, I think that it's gonna take us a couple of months to find the right home, and once we find it, uh, looking at what's happened with the inflation and everything, I think our interest rate is gonna be over five. My friends got 2.6 or something. I really regret not buying a house last year, but I couldn't because I was working on my um, tax situation anyway. So, 1.2, put it here. The down payment is $259,000, and this is after a tax, by the way. So it's 20%, and then monthly payment is gonna be 7,174. That's including property, taxes, home insurance, etc. Let's look at the rental income. Like the thing is here in the Bay Area, it is very rare that you can find something, but at least this is what my real estate um, person tells me, is that, Normally, your mortgage payments will be higher than your rental income. So Zillow says that this house can generate, let me see, $4,000 or $4,100 in rent. So obviously, if we get this house, it's $3,000 more that we have to pay in mortgage. And this is the way it works here. So I was talking to the homeowner who we're renting uh, this house from. They pay over $15,000 in mortgage and we pay them $7,500 a month in rental. And he did commercial real estate before, so he says in terms of cash flow, this is the worst house for him. But in terms of home value, they got it in 2015 for 2.9 million. Now it can sell for 4.2 million. So they almost doubled their amount in less than what, in, in seven years. And I think by 2025, they, they will be able to sell it for like 5 million. It's just crazy how prices grow here. And on average, house prices double every 10 years in Silicon Valley. It's just this crazy region with a lot of things happening. And a lot of people can say like, oh, but this is the end of Silicon Valley, everything is remote, nobody wants to live here. This is not what we're seeing on the market. So my real estate manager says the houses go on the market on Wednesdays, Saturday, Sunday, open houses, and then by Tuesday, they get all the offers. And on average, houses get like three to five offers. Okay, so we're going to see another property. And they say this part of Pacifica Lindemore is like the best. So we'll see, okay. The house behind me is on the market for 1.6 million. Probably gonna go for 1.9, I don't know, 2 million, depending on the offers they get. It's nice, it's big, they have an ocean view, the area looks nice, but the problem might be it's right next to a busy road, like cars coming, well, not too busy, but kind of busy. So. You won't be able to just sit on the terrace and relax because even when shooting this video, I have to make my voice louder. 
Of course, real estate is one of the best ways to build your wealth and 90% of millionaires built their wealth investing in real estate. But I think it's also important to remember that if you talk to investment professionals, if you talk to millionaires, almost everyone would tell you that it's not just real estate that they own, they own a diversified portfolio of different assets. And if you think that buying a home is something that is too early for you and you want to maybe invest in rates, which is like a way to invest in real estate without buying a home, maybe you want to invest in stocks, maybe you want to invest in some alternative assets and diversify your portfolio. And this video is brought to you by Masterworks and Masterworks allows you to invest in an asset which has outperformed gold, S&P 500, and real estate by nearly 3x from 1995 to 2021. And the asset is art. Paintings like Picasso's, Banksy's, and Monet's usually sell for more than houses in Silicon Valley. But it's really hard to buy them. Like you have to be someone really, really wealthy to buy the whole piece. But Masterworks came up with a solution that allows you to buy a fraction of masterpieces. This means that you can invest in art without needing a millionaire status. By the way, Masterworks is valued at over $1 billion by the venture capital market. Their team of art experts analyze over 60,000 data points to find trending artists with high potential for growth. Then they purchase those paintings and allow you to buy fractions of those pieces. They have over 400,000 members using their platform already. If you want priority access, check the link down below to skip ahead of their line. This is not an investment advice, but something to consider to diversify your investment portfolio. By the way, our budget can also get us a two bedroom apartment. But the problem with the apartments is that there are HOA fees. And here in the Bay Area, they are on average from $500 to $800 a month. And the problem with the HOA fee is that if you're unable to rent your apartment for some reason, you still pay for your mortgage, of course, and you also pay the HOA fees. And um, so my aunt, she had an apartment in Miami and she held it for, I think, almost 10 years, but she ended up generating zero dollars on it just because a lot of expenses went to the HOA fees and she had several months during the pandemic when she was unable to rent it out and she had to fix a lot of things and because it's a condo they had several standards so she couldn't just install any air conditioner they had certain requirements and so I've been talking to a lot of real estate agents and people tell me that condos are not the best investment if you want to rent them out First, because of the HOA fees. Second, because there are several quotas in different buildings on how many condos can be rented out. And sometimes this quota is like 50%, which means that if 50% of homeowners are actually renting out their condos, then you need to be on the wait list in order to rent it out. So I don't really want to be in the situation where I buy something and uh, I'm not able to rent it out. And also Airbnbs are almost impossible with condos. They're not 100% possible if you own a single family home, just because there are certain areas that prohibit you from renting a property out for less than 30 days. They say you can rent out this place for $8,000 a month. It says right here, I'm not joking. But then you look at this beauty. You're like, are you sure people are gonna pay $8,000? <laughs> Okay, this area, unfortunately, first of all, it's cold. It's fine, it's okay, but it doesn't look too well. There's no trees, that's what it looks like. Long and lonely. Long and lonely. Another thing, uh, what I used to do a lot last year when we were just renting out different places two years ago on Airbnb, I would check the crime rate on Trulia so I could see without actually going there so I could see what's happening in the area and now they disabled it because there would be bias against some districts and people would think only, you know, bad people live there so they removed this and now you have to use another app but it only tells you the recent crimes and I just checked that area so 
that exact street had two crime reports today. There is a website to use, but it doesn't give you the whole data like of understanding what's going on in the area every day. It was educational, so that part of San Mateo, unfortunately, no. We're gonna look at another area that's called North Fair Oaks. It's in Redwood City. Okay, this area is also like offices, mostly. Some storages. I don't even know what this is. But it's cuter than the one that we just saw. Palm trees, my favorite. More palm trees. And there, the flag, the open house. No, this is nicer. This is definitely nicer. Well, we're not the only ones who want to see it. <laughs> okay, this is definitely way, way nicer. I way, like way, it. way more. I like it. I like that we're doing like from low end to higher end. Okay. So okay, this house is 1.5. So basically our budget. I like that it's kind of renovated. Like it's new kitchen, new counter. It's just so crazy that in this area, 1.5 million gets you something that needs to be renovated, gets you something in an area with really, like the schools here, they're like, oh, two. Their rating is two of the elementary school. It is hard. Okay, we came to this amazing neighborhood in Palo Alto. It's really nice walking distance to University Avenue. Look at this. Look, like this is a different vibe. And it's a 1.6 million home. But let me show you why it's 1.7. It's basically a small mini village inside this area. Yeah, it's nice. It's small. I think it's very good if you're a student and you want to run the apartment. Yeah, I think for something. rental, this is amazing. But the problem is it's 1.6. I'm qualified for 1.5. It's like a two bedroom. Is it? Is it two bedroom? Yeah, there was an, yeah. like, it's very small two bedroom with this tiny area here and this backyard and it's Crescent Park it's one of the best Mark Zuckerberg lives lives here this is that's the neighborhood no, I like it people are already they're so excited I know they're excited because it's a really nice area This house is really nice. I think it's gonna go for 1.77. It's a really nice neighborhood. We lived here when we were renting on Airbnb when we were traveling. Uh, it's called Crescent Park. A lot of entrepreneurs live here, a lot of cool people from Silicon Valley. It's a really small house as you have seen. You rent it out for like four or five K. If you like if you get a mortgage on average, you're gonna pay eight thousand dollars a month in mortgage, and then you get four thousand in income, and then the rest just goes towards your equity. And um, yeah, it almost doubled the price in the past 10 years, which is kind of cool. But this is like, this is the neighborhood I'm talking about. Like here, when you come here, you really want to hang out with people and the agent was really nice and the neighbors, like kids, a lot of, you know, it's just nicer. It's just this give you positive life vibe, whatever you call it. Man, not in our budget, it's just one bedroom, tiny. I don't know. If you live in this house, you can go to local schools and the high school, Palo Alto High, is one of the best schools in the area and people, students graduate, they go to Stanford, they go to all the best 
colleges and you get to study there for free. This is how it works in the US. When you live in an area, there are certain state schools that are attached to that area so you can go there and study for free, which is amazing because a good private school, they're different. Like some of them cost like $20,000 a year, but a couple that I found out about, the really good ones, they go like Sacred Heart. They're like $70,000 a year, which is crazy. But look at this area, it's so, so nice. I also found some very interesting stats. 35% of families or households in the United States rent their places, but the stats change when we come to Bay Area. In the Bay Area, 53% own, but 47% do not own the place where they live. And again, this is connected with different factors, but some of them are renting 25%, and there are people who are in public housing, or there are homeless people. Uh, there are rental owned by nonprofits. So Bay Area, in terms of home ownership, is just different from the rest of the US. And I also found this cool map that shows the difference between median mortgage payment and median monthly rent. So, and if we look, California is again among the winners. Well, number one is New Jersey. So people pay $1,000 more in mortgage versus rent. So at some point of your life, especially when you're single or just starting out a family, you're like, well, mortgage seems like a lot. It's a long commitment. I don't know where I'm gonna end up living, etc. Um, and it's $1,000 more than rent. So when you're tied on cash, of course, it makes more sense to rent. By the way, buying a house is not the only way to invest in real estate. I've actually been investing in real estate before through so-called REITs. So REIT is a real estate investment trust. So imagine there is a company out there that has millions and hundreds of millions of dollars that it invests into different real estate properties. It manages the properties itself or they hire someone to manage those and you can buy a chunk of their fund. So for example, the most popular one is a rate by Vanguard. They own a huge variety of different properties from hospitals to commercial buildings. And this is what I've been buying as part of my portfolio to diversify. This is not investment advice, but just something to look into if you are excited about owning real estate, but you don't want to commit to just one single property and maybe you need more time to learn about this. Meanwhile, you can start investing in rates, but again, not investment advice, make decisions for yourself. You can find most of the rates on Webull and this is a brokerage app that I use as well. If you use my link to open the account and deposit any amount, you will get five free stocks from Webull. The link will be down below. So this is all super exciting. This is a new journey for me. I'm learning a lot. I am excited to show you what's, what's gonna happen next. And uh, I was thinking about like, what is the criteria of a home that I want to get? And the criteria is I want to be excited to go to Home Depot find the fixtures myself, go to the place, work with contractors, do something myself, fix something myself, redecorate myself. So this has to be a place that I fall in love with. From the investment standpoint, I understand that in terms of cash flow, it's not the best deal, at least here in the Bay Area, but in terms of the asset value, if I keep it for at least 10 years, then I should be good with my returns. But yeah, let me know what you think is another good area I should look at here around where we live if you're here. Uh, if you're not, let me know what's the most exciting thing about watching these videos. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. Don't forget to subscribe to Silicon Valley Girl to follow my journey of buying a first home. And I'll see you soon in our next videos. Bye bye.